have you ever seen that hashtag the struggle is real uh yes i think so uh, yeah. yeah okay it's like really popular it's actually becoming a cliche but i thought of that hashtag before i got on the show because how people actually describe you know what they're going through maybe a hard circumstances or feeling down on their luck but that hashtag itself uh, really draws attention to more struggles. So, so anyone that's listening, do not use a hashtag <laughs> because the struggle doesn't have to be forever. Absolutely. You know, just looking through the uh, Census Bureau, and they mention how the single parent family are at a high risk of financial hardship, which really concerns me because I've been in that situation before. Okay. And it's overwhelming. It not only affects your finance, but also psychologically and physically. Right. So, it, 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 and if it's affecting your, uh, a person physically, then it can affect the person's health, of course. If they're constantly and, worrying and thinking about how they're going to provide for themselves and their, and their family. Yeah. And it's, it's gotten to the point where, what, like 67% of single parents are reporting that they are struggling financially. Wow. Yes. Yes. So we have work parent, to do. Single parent homes are like the norm now, if you think about it. <laughs> where years wow. ago in the 60s and the 70s, you know, it was, it was uncommon. You know, but now, like, one-third of the household are single parents. And so, it's interesting how, how things have changed and moved in this direction of, instead of a community effort like it was before, now it's every man for himself. What, why do you think that is? There could be a number of reasons, and I don't want to bring out conspiracy theories. <laughs> 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 but we're at a, a new age, and we at this this age of Aquarius where, you know, people are becoming awakened to this transition, this shift and realizing like, okay, this doesn't make sense. You know, now the divorce rate is high and, mm -hmm. you know, or more females are having kids and they feel there's a shortage of men. So they're willing to have children. There's a shortage of don't men. Feel, <laughs> don't feel like they need a man in the household. So, you know, broken households, it seems to be very common because you got to think about in the 70s, late 70s, 80s, that's where mothers started actually working. That was that whole woman's right that we need to get paid, we need to work. And um, not to say if it's bad or good, but, you know, every time there's a, a, a movement, there is a, a change and a shift. Do you feel it, it has uh, affected you personally as well? I never thought I would be a single parent. I got married young, but, you know, I had my son when I was 21. And I was still married. And by the time he turned two years old is the first time I had considered myself to be a single mom. And from there, it was challenging. You know, what What do you do and what time frames did it take for you to, to, to you know, move out of that state of mind or that, that, that mindset to... Oh, so the to healing. Learning how to heal my money blocks, learning how to heal my money insecurities. Um, because, you know, based on statistics, like single parents or single moms get paid less than married women. Right. And you also got to think about, to, especially with child care, and if your child is sick and you have mm -hmm. no sick leave left and you have to go, that affects your money. So I got yes. to the point where it, it was such an agony that I was tired of feeling the pain. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started getting into um, energy healing. Ah, so, okay. but yeah, energy influenced the flow of money. And that's what I've learned. 
financial struggles is really due to the feeling of lack of money. That's all it is. And the the lack of money comes from our thoughts, emotions, and beliefs we have about money. Right. In in your opinion, what would the... um... What would be the first person that a, a a single person should do to um, allow a shift to make a change in their life so that they have a more blessed and prosperous life and healthy as well? Because mm-hmm. health, health and wealth, they they almost well, go hand in hand. It it really starts with understanding how energy works. Now we already talked about this plenty of times on the show, right? But Dr. Joe Dispenser, in his book, Becoming Supernatural, he gave a really perfect idea of the magnet. I'm laughing because I mentioned Dr. Joe Dispenser earlier. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite authors. You know, he's a neuroscientist. And he mentioned about the magnet. So, you know, a magnet have a north and a south pole. Right. Negative and positive charge. And then the polarity between those two ends produced a electromagnetic field. The stronger the polarity, the stronger the field. So we are also energetic beings. So we have a north and we have a south pole. The mind is the north. The base of our spine is the south. So when we are going through financial struggle or we in this survival mode, we are drawing energy from our electromagnetic field and we're drawing it in and we're storing it in our body especially the lower parts of our body. Interesting. When we, and when we stay in that survival mode for a long period of time, we begin to deplete our energy. Therefore, we lose our magnetic ability to attract money. So physical discomfort begins in the body, and then it starts to affect certain things, like our reproductive system. It starts to affect our sexual performance. We have lower mid-back pains, digestive system. Those are the really the lower parts of our body. Wow, that's interesting. In. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of people that suffer with low back pain and suffer financially as well. Yes, yes, yes. Because you also got to think when you're struggling financially, you have certain emotions, right? So stress is not really an emotion. It's the the negative emotion that caused your body to react a certain way. Right. So before you get to the stress, you're angry, you're frustrated, you're annoyed, all those negative emotions. And when we continue to stay in that state of mind, that's when our, it, it becomes stress on our body. It's going to stress not only in our organ, but also our um, nervous system. So yes, financial struggle can cause migraine, anxieties, depression. It affects our nervous system. Man, this is so, technical. <laughs> it's like, isn't it amazing? Like, you know, <laughs> this, all this stuff. <laughs> we, yeah. we know that stress kills, right? But we right. really don't know, like, how. Like, right. what's the impact? And we're so quick, as, especially as a single parent. And this is something I was really guilty of is always pointing the finger at the, the someone else the other the other person or yes, the, my yes. son's father like it was his fault that I'm in this situation and technically that is not true because right. it's all about how you think and feel about money right so one of the ways that we can start to heal our money blocks is to start to have an awareness of the relationships we have with money. Revisit some of those money stories that we tell ourselves or we've been through and what those money beliefs that we were conditioned to believe as true, because that's what belief is. Belief is really what's truth. That's, that's, that's why sometimes it's hard for people to change their belief because they're so stuck in thinking that it is the truth. But our money belief comes from our childhood and also past experience. So it could be 
experienced eviction, foreclosures, repossession, you know, as a single parent. So you, you, you compile these stories and you own up to it. Like that is your truth and that's detrimental, you know? So when, when you go back in, when it's not yeah, really, it's not really your truth or their truth. It's actually someone else's truth, and it's, then they they accepted it as their truth. Exactly, exactly. Like um, like like mm-hmm. how I was talking with a coworker of mine. Not not to interrupt, but how I was talking with a a coworker of mine, and he, and I would ask him, "What does he call money?" <laughs> he said, "Scratch." I said, scratch. Why do you call it scratch? <laughs> he said, because it was hard to get. I was like, it's, it's hard to get. Who taught you that? that that's not true. <laughs> yes. Or that's, the a grunt. Self-limited, that's a self-limited belief. And yeah, exactly. And he believes that money is hard to get, he will always have trouble getting the money that he wants. Right. And then, you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, yeah, grind, yo, I got to grind. What? What are you talking about? You, money's supposed to come to you easy and effortlessly. You don't yeah. have to grind to get money. <laughs> but, but when you think about it, we were conditioned to train to think and feel that way. Just like uh, money is the root to all evil. Exactly. That's not true. Is what your intentions behind it right. could be something of greed and evilness, but not money itself, because we need money to sustain ourselves. Right. Absolutely. So people need to realize, hey, what is this new belief that I want to instill? Money so, comes yeah, to me easily yeah, and effort, effortlessly. effortlessly. Yeah. That's the new belief. Yeah. I'm <laughs> impressing on the subconscious and uh you know that that's the way to do it yeah exactly